Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. And you are in our July Mentoring Matters talk by the Mentoring Club. And this is our program for this evening. So I'll give you a little bit about I'll give you a little bit of background about the Mentoring Club. And then we'll go right into our main topic, which is five effective ways to communicate as a leader from our speakers, Brian and Anthony. And then um, towards the end, I'll take about five minutes to do some announcements uh, of the events that are happening within the mentoring club. And um, you're all welcome to uh, join our community in those events. First up, I would like to thank um, everybody who has uh, made the village function. So it takes a village, a lot of volunteer supporters, um, and, um, and even uh, pro bono legal counsel. So, um, so thank you to everybody. Right now you will see in the session, Breen, um, John and uh, um, John may not be able to make it, and Hong is not, is tentative because of his startup. But you will eventually meet some of the folks um, as we go along. I'd like to remind everybody that we do have presence in various social media channels, uh, so please follow us and then um, keep track of the posts that we have. Feel free to comment and like. Um, if there are anything interesting for you, um, we would appreciate your feedback. Now, for those of you who are first time attendees to the session, um, I do the quick intro about the mentoring club. So what are we about? We are a nonprofit organization and we are providing a mentoring community to aspiring and seasoned leaders. And at the heart of our vision and our mission are passionate driven mentees. They want to become leaders and the community of mentors within the mentoring club are supposed to help them to get there, to become better leaders faster. And the way that we do it is we try to understand what their goals are and help them understand their skills and develop the skills that they need to achieve their career and life goals. So we talk about career and life goals because we only have one life to live. Career is just one part of it. It is not everything. So we'd like to be able to help everybody go through that process of leadership development through mentoring. And we're doing this anywhere in the world. So it's a global platform. and. The, end, the ultimate vision is that as mentees become successful leaders themselves, that they will become mentors to others. And that's how the cycle of giving back will continue, hopefully without end. Uh, and so just to give you a little bit of idea about how the mentoring relationships are happening worldwide, um, these are some mentee examples. We have one Michaela in California with multiple mentors, um, different locations. We have one Mita in Kenya, again, multiple mentors. Of one Siddharth from India, again, multiple locations of mentors, and one from China, and um, that is Choi. And then we have Naj from the Philippines, again, multiple mentors. Uh, so depending on their goals, and the skills that they need to develop in themselves, they are able to find the right mentors to help them. And this is how we're distributed at the end of 2021, um, mentors and mentees around the world. So we did this was the number um, at the end of the year was 196 mentors and mentees. So we're over 200 um, at this point. And how do we attract mentors and mentees and supporters? Uh, we share with them our values. And if the values resonate, then they're welcome to join the community. So the first group of values, integrity, honesty, and commitment are anchored on trust. Um, these are the values that make us trustworthy as individuals and professionals. The second group of values are anchored on leadership, vision, and execution as what make us successful leaders, one without the other um, is not gonna do it. 
Uh, and the last group, oh, sorry, the last group of values is anchored on community. So humanity, contentment, and family. At the end of the day, these are the social grounding forces that eventually make us feel fulfilled and happy as leaders. So I will now um, introduce and um, let Anthony and Brian take over for um, the core of our session. So I'm, I'm really excited. Um, just I just finished um, telling you about the core values of the mentoring club and that the, the grouping was actually influenced by one of the sessions that I attended with Anthony. So take it away, folks. Thank you, Lisel. Thank you, uh, everybody, for coming. It's good to see you. I, I love small groups because our intentions today, Anthony and I, is to be a lot more interactive. So um, in a minute, we'll kind of tell you what the plan is moving forward. But before I before I do that, uh, I want to welcome again welcome everybody. My name is Brian Sparks. I'm an executive communication coach. My co-host is Anthony Lee. He is the founder of Heroic Voice Academy. He is also an executive communication coach. The goal of this particular uh, workshop talk for the mentoring club is to introduce you to a sound foundation of how to make a connection, build trust, and establish relationships. We're all about developing the relationships before we get well into the business. But Anthony, hey, I'm excited about this because we're gonna run it just like we do the presentation gym. Um, we're gonna give them the foundation. So here we go, we're used to this, huh? Yeah, yeah, and one of the things I'm gonna encourage everyone to do is participate. There are a lot of, Zoom sessions out there where people are just watching and absorbing a tiny bit and then walking away and potentially forgetting that little bit. So to change that formula, what Brian and I are going to do is give you lots of opportunity to take something that is from the screen and have you take it in, take it in in your head, take it in in your heart, take it in in your whole body so that you can have it for your next conversation for your next presentation, for your next you know, high stakes opportunity. Yeah, and, and these are again, just foundational principles. We have a lot of stuff to share with you. Um, what I love about mentor, mentee relationships, is that I, I truly believe the genius in that relationship is the humility in the mentee knowing what they don't know and seeking help. I mean, we're all smart people. We're experts in our industry. Um, but sometimes in my experience, and I've been in Silicon Valley working in the startup world for 10 years now, and I've seen a lot of smart, smart people in a leadership position or launching a business, and they're very specialized in their particular area. And oftentimes, once they get put in a leadership position, speaking outside the silo of their expertise is a challenge. And what I've learned is if we can't speak and communicate outside the scope of that expertise, we're doomed. I often say this, that you could have a product. I think it was, Joseph, you're, you've got a startup going. Um, I'm sure you're on a great roll. You talked a little bit about your traction. I have seen pitches where the idea, the product or service is an amazing idea. It could be classified as a 10 out of 10, possible unicorn in the, in the future. But as the presentation or the pitch rolled on, the presenter, the CEO, the founder, the leader, whoever's giving that pitch could only speak at like a five or six. And unfortunately, by the time that presentation was over, that product, that service wasn't perceived as highly because the communicator was not very that good. So if you're pitching at a five and your product is a, is a 10, where are you gonna be perceived? Only as good as you communicate. So we're going to give you the foundations of, of what it looks like to start with a great pitch, the mindset, what you must cover. So today we're going to cover five different things. And I'm just going to give you an overview and we'll break it down. Anthony, we'll go back and forth. We'll, we'll interact with you. If you have questions, put them in the chat. Um, feel free to, to, to chat with each other in, in, in the, section, uh, the chat room, ask questions. We'll have a Q&A, but we hope we can kind of go along as we speak and answer those questions. So the big picture, the five effective ways to communicate as a leader, we're gonna cover five things. Number one, in the lower left-hand corner, 
that's called a connection triangle. What does it look like? What are the elements that go into having a solid message? That's from you to the message. If you kind of look at the lower left-hand corner and then the lower right-hand corner, the connection between you and your message. And then you take that message, which is in the lower right-hand corner and kind of go up to the top. That's your audience. And then you to your audience, which is the left hand of the triangle. We'll unpack that. And we're going to make it really simple why you have to have all these elements in order to make a connection. Let me give you an example. Again, you could have all the facts, the data, give a clean presentation, never stutter, crystal clear. But if you don't make the connection, you don't build the trust for a second conversation. We want to, we want to position you for success to have that second conversation. Then the second thing we're gonna talk about, if you look at the, uh, the middle icon, there's actually three elements there that we're gonna unpack. It's the, the, it's the second, the third, and the fourth thing we're gonna talk about. The, the second thing is the vision. The third thing we're gonna talk about is important of values and your vows, what you're committed to. We'll get into that. And finally, what's beyond the pitch? Why is it important to have a message portfolio? Anthony and I, Every Thursday from 12 to 1, we give a presentation gym. We talk about how to be successful in a pitch opportunity. We position all our startups, all our leaders, all our HR representatives for success. Now, this package, we give away completely free. Our competition, beyond the pitch, if you do well, you're going to have multiple opportunities, continued opportunities to speak. And usually at that point, there's different messages that are gonna be required of you. And so we help you with a message portfolio. You cannot give a pitch, have a second conversation with somebody who is interested and give the same pitch. That will be your last conversation. If you do bad on the stage, chances are you won't be back to the stage. If you do bad in your second conversation, you just won't get a, you know, a, a, build a relationship and build trust with that particular person or that particular group. So we position, we position you for success on the stage and for those second conversations. Anthony, did I cover it all? You did, you did. And I'm gonna encourage everyone to take notes. So I have my iPad here and to set up how to take notes, simply do this, draw a triangle on your iPad or on a piece of paper. In the lower section, lower left of the triangle, draw a stick figure. That stick figure is you. On the lower right, draw a speech bubble. Yeah, you're seeing it here. And then at the top, draw a bunch of stick figures. Okay. So I'm taking notes. I encourage you to take notes because Brian is going to cover what can I do on each side of the triangle to create a stronger connection. How can I be more strongly connected to my audience? How can I be more strongly connected to my message? And how can my audience be more strongly connected to my message? That's the magic leg of the triangle. If they're connected to your message, you're getting a second conversation. I love it. I love it. All right, Anthony, thank you. So are we ready to roll? Are we ready to dig in here, Anthony, to, and, and give them a little insight? Let's do it. All right. So I want to invite all of you to interact with us again here at this point. So the first leg, what we're going to do here is Anthony and I are going to have a conversation about what a connection triangle is and why you have to position yourself and the way that you position yourself to the audience is so important. When we get to the vision, the value, and the vows, we're going to give you a slow opportunity to develop a little bit of a messaging opportunity here to talk about what you do. When we were in the green room, I talked to a couple of mentors. What does it look like as a vision to work with you as a mentor? So I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I just wanted to kind of salt the mind as we kind of go down this gold mine of information here. All right, the connection triangle, here we go. Anthony. We're gonna begin with the left side of the triangle because when you jump on stage, the pitfall that I normally see Brian is they jump straight into the content, right? They fail to make a connection with the audience. I mean, look what Liselle did is she connected to us. She didn't jump straight into content. <laughs> if you approach someone on the street and say, hey, look at this great drink I'm selling, <laughs> they're gonna walk away. You walk up to someone and say, how are you? Get to know them, let them get to know you. So that's what this left side of the triangle is all about. 
Yeah, it's really a vulnerability piece. And when you're giving a pitch, whether you're a startup or you're talking about uh, the mentoring club or your role at work or HR, this is an opportunity to talk about an, ex an experience. The left side of the triangle represents two things, the ability to relate and empathy. So the relatability is like, what is the story that brings you here today, right? How do you connect with your audience through story? And then how well do you understand it? I say, all, I say this all the time to the startups that I work with. If you are not presenting the problem, an understanding of the problem solution within the first 30 seconds, you're not going to grab relatability and you're not going to grab empathy. Because when you define the pain point, right, there's a problem. I'm here this, I'm here, I'm here because I understand this. I'm here because I understand the lack of, of startups to communicate their idea. When you can communicate your idea, you can ultimately get a second conversation. Now, I'm not giving you the solution and, and how we're, Anthony and I are going to talk about that with the connection triangle, with the message portfolio, the vision value vows. But what I'm suggesting to in the pain, the pain solution piece, the empathy piece, is that a lack of communication creates a problem. And when you have communication, you have relationship. Didn't describe how we're going to get there. Didn't talk about the bus we're traveling on from here to there. I just talked about the pain and the solution. So this is about empathy. This is about relatability. This is about telling a story. And depending on the time that you have, if you're giving a TED Talk, you may have, Anthony, what, three minutes? If you're giving a pitch, yeah. you may only have one minute. Joseph, you're in clean tech, clean energy, right? So if I were interviewing with a clean tech company, you know, I would relate first by saying, you know, I drove over here in a hybrid vehicle. Uh, I was so excited because uh, that's one thing I'm doing and I want to do more. And that's what the mission of your company is. And I look around and I see so many people frustrated by the rising gas prices and that's ridiculous. So hybrid is the first way to go. I think your company is gonna be adding to that. I wanna create a world of abundance where people don't have to worry about gas prices or electricity prices. So it's meeting the audience wow. on a common ground. Hey, we see eye to eye, we get each other. Uh, this can happen in a networking situation. It can happen in your first interview. But before jumping into any content, find a way to connect with, and there's two things here, head, and heart, right? Relatability, you'll connect. Hey, we care about the same things. Heart, we feel passionate about the same things. Yeah, I love that, Anthony. Um, here's a, cl a clarifying distinction also as we connect from the head to the heart. If you're presenting a startup, uh, Anthony and I specialize in startups and HR, sales, uh, leaders who are looking to move a lot of people forward, build a team, bring things together. When you identify the problem and the solution and develop that sense of empathy, your audience says, you get me, you know me. Here's a huge mistake that people make oftentimes. And there's not there's anything wrong with it because when we talk about the um, connection to your message, we're gonna talk about passion. But here's a distinction I think is so important for all of us to remember. If you're identifying a problem and a solution, that doesn't mean coming out of the starting block saying, I have this great idea. You're going to love this idea. Too often, companies think that a business is built on a great idea that you think you have. Falling in love with your own idea doesn't necessarily convince me that you have a solution that is marketable. And it also tells me as a leader that you may not have the ability to pivot. Because if you identify a problem, there are multiple ways of solving this problem. You just have one that you think is going to work. But if you just have one idea that you're that you're um, that you're in love with, two things happen. One, I don't know what problem you're solving, and two, I don't know what market you're addressing. So the people factor is completely removed, and it's all about you as the speaker. And your audience will be turned off in the first fifteen seconds of your presentation. So it's great to have a passion. It's great to be enthusiastic but you have to establish an understanding with your audience before you sell them on the passion that you have for your product. First 30 seconds of a networking conversation. 
obviously first 30 seconds on stage. What do you say that has created a connection between you and your audience? If you have any uh, text that works, stories that you've told, opening lines. Uh, I know Pete's on the line. Pete always has a lot of jokes to share. Uh, so if you have great things that have worked as openers, send them to the chat. We'd love for everyone to see and benefit from the wisdom of the audience. And Brian, while people are doing that, why don't you go ahead and introduce the second leg of the triangle, which is the you to message. Yes, this is the distinction I was making before. And it was put in the chat, uh, Lisa, this is a great point, And I want to reemphasize this. I know all of you aren't in a startup world. You're leaders, you are directors, you're managers, you are tasked with moving a group of people forward, or you're even maybe looking to be in a position of leadership. Okay. These elements of empathy, relatability, and now what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about expertise and passion. Okay, this is you to your message. These elements are what, again, form a connection. You're not just trying to sell an idea. That's why, why it's important to understand the connection triangle is it's not a necessarily a selling tool. It's a relationship development tool. Big difference because we focus on the ask or the invitation later in a pitch opportunity, and they're very distinct. So this does not just apply, even though you hear me saying my, my experience is with startups, this applies to leadership development. So as mentors, let me kind of reframe this. As mentors, your first goal is to really understand your mentee. Now, if we look at the, the second half of the triangle, your expertise and your passion, you all have years of experience in your particular field. Some of you have now taken this experience and going to start a business. Some of you are going to go higher on, on the, um, the ladder, the corporate ladder, wherever your direction is, who, whatever you're called to do. But there's also needs to be a sense of passion and a fulfillment that this gives you. And we can't say this enough. This is why we have the presentation gym. When you take the stage, sometimes we're in our head. And so it takes a little bit of practice to bring that passion up. So, so it's so important when you're talking about your message to have the expertise and the passion so the head heart connection is made. Anthony? Yeah, so there are a couple of things here. Whether you are a mentor, whether you are introducing yourself to a hiring manager, expertise means taking everything that's up here and being a good curator of information. Yes, you know a lot. Did you do the homework and pick just the necessary pieces to share with the person in front of you. Now, Brian mentioned there's tons that we teach in the presentation gym. There's probably over 200 topics that we've taught in the gym, Brian. How many did we bring today? We got five. Five. If we attempted to teach our 200, we would speak at 1,000 words a minute, and you wouldn't get anything. But here, five, five is doable in the time frame that Lizelle has reserved for us. So be a good curator of your content. Be a good curator of the items on your CV, your resume. Be a good curator of stories that you bring that highlight your credibility, character, and competence. Passion. Now, we all have been in a room where the person on stage sucked. And part of that sucky skill is speaking in monotone because they're reading or they just don't know how to present. So be passionate. You could tell Lizelle is passionate about this club. You hear it in her voice, you see it in her face. Brian, when he let off, the same thing. So show that you know and you care about your message. I'm gonna invite everybody to do the same thing in chat. How do you curate the stuff that you bring to the conversation? And how do you extend the range of your vocals or your facial expression or your energy to show that, wow, I'm so excited to be here? Anthony, that's, that's an excellent point. I love the point you made about curating. And we're going to talk about the third leg of the triangle. But get ready because we're about ready to also talk about the vision, the value, and the vows. And you're going to have a little bit of an assignment. And the engagement now is going to 
start to take place in this workshop. Speaking of engagement, that's the third leg of the triangle. So if you think about your message to your audience, there's two important elements on this side of the triangle that are huge. And this is really where your expertise will come through. An expert, the lower left hand or the lower part of the triangle being an expert, isn't the ability to lecture for hours on end. I'm sure all of us could take our, our, our experience and just go. But expertise really shines through when you're given a short period of time to, to identify the most valuable points. So you want your audience to be able to retain. We're talking about five things today. We usually, Anthony and I, just talk about one skill and one slide. So we've kind of doubled down today, and this is a lot, but we're talking about five things. So when you are speaking to your audience, pick those things that you think they need to retain and you would like to have a second conversation about. That second conversation is about engagement. You want your, your audience to be able to think through what you're sharing, see themselves in that vision and say, I think I can help here. Let me give you all an example. I often talk about values and I think if I trotted out one value, for example, family, I think we could all say, or even friends, friends and family are a value. And I could give you three things that identify what makes family and friends a value, but here's what I'm not gonna tell you. Here's what I'm trust that you're gonna think about. When I say friends and family, I guarantee you, you weren't thinking about my family. I allowed you to think of your friends and family in that space. So the ability to engage and have your audience comprehend is leaving enough space for them to perceive themselves in that particular message. Anthony? Daniel has a great way here. He does a quick poll, raise of hands, right? And that engages the audience. It makes it sound like a conversation, right? Not where I'm blasting stuff at you and I don't care what you say or think. So. As an example, how many of you have ever seen a bad presentation? Okay, just raise your, raise your hands. Good. So how many of you have ever given a bad presentation? I have. <laughs> and that's why we're here. We're, we're here to learn from each other. So that's an example of engagement. There's a Confucius saying, Brian, that I love. What I see, I tend to forget. What I hear, I tend to remember. What I do, I tend to master, take away, integrate, whatever that is. So that's why it's important for engagement to be included in everything that you do. If you're interviewing for a job, you can ask questions too to engage. If you are a mentee, it's not just here's, here's my wisdom and walk away. Here's my wisdom. How do you envision using this at, at uh, your work? So these are two keys to make sure that whatever wisdom really is brought in, integrated, so they have it available to use. Uh, we're gonna move now into the exercise portion of the, 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 the workshop. So that was kind of the lecture around the connection triangle. Now we're gonna talk about three different um, uh, value propositions in terms of giving a great presentation. So we're gonna talk about vision, value, and vows. First off, vision. Where are you going? Anthony, what, what can we share about the importance? Because Lisel gave a great example about her vision mm -hmm. for mentors and mentees coming together and that ability then to kind of uh, build upon itself. What are some great insights about developing a clean vision? When Liesel put that vision on the screen, it made it so easy for me, one, to take in, and two, to brag and share, this is what the mentoring club is about. Now, contrast that with, here's a one-page brochure, read it, and then share it. I'm not likely to do that, but just because Liesel made it easy for me to see a picture, and the best part of the picture, I could see myself in that picture. Right. So right. the exercise here is, I want you to take a picture, not right now, 
I want you to transport yourself, let me one year in the future, two years in the future, pick a moment in time and take your phone, where's my phone? Take your phone and then imagine taking yourself, uh, taking a picture of whatever you're seeing in front of you. And your job is to come back in time and say, hey, check out this picture. It actually happened. Leadership is about seeing the future a little bit more clearly than someone else. But a mentee goes to a mentor because they have a little bit more clarity about something. So when you're out there, be prepared to talk about what vision of the future you are dedicated to creating. Now, me and Brian, we are creating a specific moment in time. People who show up in our presentation gyms, there's a picture. Brian, you want to draw the picture or you want me to draw the picture? You draw the picture. You're a better drawer than me. I embarrass myself when I draw. <laughs> All right. So what I want you to do as I'm drawing the picture is think about a period of time, a year from now, where something you have been working towards has come true. Doesn't need to be fancy. Stick figures and shapes. So go ahead and do that now. So this this picture should answer the question, just as, as you are all thinking of a picture to draw, um, or even the words to find to describe that picture. This is, this is the prompt. My vision for the world looks like this, and it's a picture. My vision for the world looks like this, and it plays into the analogy that Anthony just shared about you went five, 10 years into the, into the future, took a picture, and now are bringing it back and you're saying, it looks like this. This is the vision. Anthony, what do you got so far? All right. So this is the future that we are creating for everyone that shows up in the presentation gym. This is 15 seconds after they've delivered an outstanding presentation. So they're on stage, they have a slide, their closing slide of their big idea. Everyone in the audience is smiling and some member of the audience wants to have a second conversation with you to offer money, to offer support or to offer five-star reviews, reputation when you get off stage. And that's it. This, I drew this in less than 20 seconds. I bet you, you can draw this in less than 20 seconds. I bet you can take this drawing and describe it to someone else and say, hey, this is why you need to show up in the gym with Brian and Anthony. This is really the back of the napkin. Yeah, exactly. So that's your exercise. Right now, draw something very, very simple. What is the future that you are creating? Anthony, do you think we should also give them a second a variation where you can just use words and answer the question, my vision for the world is. Yeah, so for example, so we love to use multiple modalities. Um, Anthony's talking about a visual. This is now an auditory where it's like, okay, it, it I hear this and it sounds like this. So you have a choice depending on what your strengths are to, to describe what the vision looks like, whether to show us in a visual or articulate it. So I'll kick it to the audience. Who'd like to share their vision in a one line or one picture uh, example? All right, Joseph. Well, I'll raise my hand. Well, All so right. my vision will be, you know, I'm creating this uh, off-grid uh, energy hub, right? So I want to see 50 of those out on the market. And, you know, yeah. So, so all these uh, uh, free chargings and, you know, off-grid charging and yeah. So, so that's my picture. So what I hear, just to clarify, is you're kind of like Anthony's picture, but rather than being smiley faces, they're chargers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's right. All right. I love it. Round of applause for going first and giving us a very clear vision. Good job. I draw my vision for one year from now on because that was your first prom. So it's just very quick sketch. It's like here. Yes. Yeah. I love uh, it. I'm pretty much drawing myself sitting in front of a computer. Um, this is how I envision myself at work in one year. I would like to look for another opportunity just to advance my career. And the sunglasses means I'm like confident, knowing what I'm doing, 
confident about my delivery and know how to communicate with all the cross-functional team in terms of get my, to, to get my work done um, and get better at it. Oh, I love it. I love the sunglasses. They make you seem really cool and confident. So I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. All right, Anthony. Yeah, just the picture is something I can remember. Right? If someone were to ask me, wait, what, what did she say again? It's super easy for me to redraw or to retell the future that you're creating. Well done, well done. All right, so Anthony, I think for the sake of time, those were two great examples for um, vision to get started. Keep those going. We're gonna, cause once we get through the next two, we want a brave soul to step up and put it all together for a very short intro with their vision, their value and their vows. So with that being said, let's move on to the values, Anthony. All right, so every picture is drawn, imagined for a purpose. If you look at our picture, why do we want to put leaders on stage to change the world, right? We are elevating three specific values when we put competent speakers, heart-centered leaders, um, and these are, every time they step on stage, they're communicating trust. And there is a uh, intersection there because Lee Sells, one of her umbrella values is trust. The second thing we want to make sure that all of our students do is they create a connection, a connection triangle. They're not speaking with or at someone, they're speaking with someone. They're not there just for the transaction, they're there to build a long-term relationship. And I guess to the, the third one, relationship. We're there to take that first meeting turn it to a second meeting, turn it to a lifetime of meetings, dinners, celebrations. So what does your picture elevate? More specifically, what are two or three values that you are elevating just by moving towards that picture? Yeah, this is really what is important to you. So if you're looking for a prompt, you're answering to this the question of, it is important because, we have this vision, it is important because that's the prompt. And so let me make a distinction. This isn't a feeling. Values do generate feelings. Values are like family, they're community. Now those things give you a sense of connection and joy and, and, and do generate feelings. But values talk more about a fulfillment, which, which also talks about problems that are being solved. Like if what is, what is the mystery to life? It's fulfillment. Feelings come and go. Values kind of get you through the pain. They get you through the good times. They get you through a lot of things, but they are a higher level of consciousness and meaning. And so when you're able to identify that you have a sense of values around community, trust, belonging, and the list goes on and on, efficiency, when you identify those things, you allow, once again, the audience to now insert their experience. That is where connection is made. So as you think about what you just described as a vision, tell us what the value proposition is. Tell us what now brings us into the heart. Tell us why this is important and we're on board for the long haul. Anthony? I would say, why did Liselle invite us into her room, right? I would say it's because we connect on specific values. Liselle's top value, trust. <laughs> so just one value could get you a second conversation. One value can get you a invitation to teach in front of their community. And that's what you're doing here by identifying values and highlighting them during your presentation, during your conversation, it makes uh, the second conversation much more of a possibility. I love it. I love it. Thanks, Anthony. So this is a really a big resonance. It resonates with your audience. So I want to kick it now out to all of you. Who would like to answer the question? You can draw it as an image, if you can draw a value, or you can articulate it by answering the question, what is important to you 
or it is important because. In other words, the vision is important because. Well, the I think the value is, you know, without this solution, some of this deployment might not be possible, right? Like, you know, for, for example, I'll use EV charging as an example. And in some of the, um, um, but in in the away from the city, they may not have a power grid to support a EV chargers, right? So, so you know, with our off grid solution, we make it possible that that we could deploy uh, this infrastructure in in in, in some places that do not have this uh, um, you know grid infrastructure and things like that, right? So, so this is the this is the you know, a, a value why we create this product. Hang tight here. Let's get some audience participation. So everybody has heard Joseph's vision. So in the chat box, type in what values did you hear through his vision? Okay, Brian, I'll, I'll add mine. You add yours. Lisa, I'll add yours. So what vision did you hear through Joseph's vision? Everybody participate. All right, I see some values being shared in the chat window. Freedom, sustainability, access, efficiency, opportunity. Keep it coming. Uh, access, green. Green yeah, would also link to sustainability. So, jo so what you have happening here is Joseph, authenticity. You are connecting, right? Your picture lit up specific values in the room. And because you're lighting those values up, it increases your, your chances of having another conversation for the person you connected with. Look at him smiling. I love it. He's like, he's like, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Joseph. Appreciate that. Thank you. Does someone else want to take a, take a crack at this? Like what your values are in terms of defining your vision? Okay, so pause. When you're listening, and this is the audience, as you're listening, if there's a value that comes up, type it right away in the chat. Tell us wh yeah. why, is, why is your vision important? I want to live my life to the fullest by um, experience all the, ex all the things that could offer, all the challenges at work, professionally and personally, um, growing myself, and trying to push me to the uncomfort zone and get better at it. So I see in the chat, personal growth, achievement, success, learning. Right? So you see just by sharing why it's important, of course you have your own values, but you've also lit up values of everyone in the room. So you could do that for a hiring manager. You could do that for a potential uh, investor. You could do that for partnerships. Uh, we have Brian Nathan who's raised his hand. Do we have time for one more? Let's do one more. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think a vision is very important. It acts like a driver. You cannot drive a car. A car cannot move without a driver. So a vision is like a director. So it's very important in any movement. If a driver is there, a car can move where it's supposed to be. And when a, a driver drives the car very well, you can avoid the traffic uh, issues on the road. So vision is very important for you to move smoothly towards, towards achieving what you tend to achieve. Thank you. Nice, good input, Nathan, I appreciate that. All right, so Anthony, let's, let's go to the home stretch where we have probably about another 10 minutes. Let's mm -hmm. get to vows and then we can go beyond the pitch. Brian, this is so important because in interviews, in pitches, in conversations, I don't hear this enough. And essentially, if you want to get a second meeting all the way until if you want to get hired, if you want to get an investment check, you have to be answering this question, this one question, how can I count on you? If this is missing, I bet you're not getting that second conversation. So Brian, in, in your experience, why is nailing this key message so important? 
Yeah. So you're, you're creating a vision. It's a very broad general vision. You're talking about particular values, which motivate the heart. But now with the vows, you're talking about action. And we talk about different modalities. You talk about what you see with the vision, with the, with the value. It's like, how does it feel? Like, what is the sense of fulfillment that you're getting? And now the vow is like, here's the action. Here's the action that I'm bringing to the table that I feel is my superpower. And I have a team usually that has superpowers that are going to move, move us towards that destination. It brings it full circle. So for example, if I tell you that I have a vision where people are communicating effectively for the purpose of building community, you can count on me to bring together a diverse group of people so that we can communicate and generate new ideas, new hope, and new opportunities for people. So that's just off the top of my head. You're telling people specifically, you can count on me to do A, B, and C moving forward. And that accountability, that bold promise goes, which for your audience, I like this person. They have a plan to get us from A to B, that, that problem solution, they're gonna build the bridge. Brian, that's excellent. So I'm gonna invite everyone to type into the chat, what is a bold promise that you can make to the person in front of you, the audience in front of you, to let's say maximize your chances for a second meeting? Or as a leader, what is your promise to those who you are mm -hmm. accountable to? Or and even just, as a family person? Yeah, so type in to the chat, you can count on me and then fill in the blank. I'd love to see what the crowd comes up with. All right, you can count on me to show up. You can count on me not to give up. You can count on me to help you succeed in your career, to be committed to building relationships that sustain the mission. Uh, so Joseph, uh, probably you would say, you can count on me to within three years, 10X my company valuation. So feel how powerful those are. When you hear that from a community member, when you hear that from a mentor, when you hear that from a leader, something in that meeting suddenly shifted. So notice it, notice how powerful it has landed with you. And the next time you are in conversation, make sure you bring that. Uh, Brian, we are almost at the end. So I'm gonna make sure you cover the final um, thing, which is beyond the pitch. What's beyond the pitch? So this is important. I, I would like to, so as, as a mentor, I believe that Anthony and I are now a part of the family as mentors. I'd like to invite all of you to continue to build your, your pitch, whether it's a pitch for a, to, to, to gain support, money, or reputation in building a business, or drive a team, or, or communicate more effectively in a particular role. It could be anything. We invite you to join us uh, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. every Thursday in the presentation gym. It's free. We provide it as mentors in this space. We're there talking about different topics, particularly around business or just as a general leader. So we teach one slide and one presentation, or yeah, one slide and one presentation skill. We position you for success on stage because we know when you're a success, you're gonna come off the stage and that audience is gonna come at you from different directions. Because as you saw here, when we talk about values, you get different perspectives. When you talk about a vision, you prompt different ideas. When you talk, talk about different action steps, you, you prompt participation. So when you give a presentation and you nail it, you are success. And we position you for that at the presentation gym on Thursday. You can sign up at, at um, heroicvoice.com slash gym. It's on the slide right there. Join us. You will be a success on the stage. Here's the thing. When you come off beyond the pitch, you're going to then need a message portfolio. Anthony, show that one slide again with the message portfolio. This is it. So imagine having one presentation and then from that presentation, being able to cut that up into seven different message um, messages. We call it the message portfolio. And that message portfolio then again provides you 21 different type presentations. You can't give the same pitch on the stage the first time 
and then have the second conversation be the exact same thing. So we coach you through that in a master class, but we really position you for success in the pitch on, on Thursdays. I put our website in the chat. You can go there and get all the resources that we provide, watch the videos and enter the gym on Thursday from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. It's a great resource. So that's in the chat. You can check it out and then connect with me on LinkedIn. It's there. And I encourage you to connect with Anthony as well. I want to extend our gratitude for Lisel, for each of you for showing up, for everyone who shared today. Uh, and Lisel, you have the mic. Thank you very much, Anthony and Brian, for that engaging um piece of conversation and thank you to everybody who participated and those who I know everybody is thinking through things um, even though they did not um, vocalize their um, uh, their thoughts but um, thank you very much everyone so what I'll do now is I'll go through the announcements so for August our uh, mentoring matters talk will be a panel discussion and the topic is about mentoring models, what works for whom, and that's why you're seeing in the photos there are different ways of um, communicating and uh, mentoring people. Our moderator is Lori Creever, and she is an author of a book called Prodigy Power. And then the panelists are mentors themselves. Uh, we have Dr. Leslie Peterson, our mentor from New Zealand. Mo Rubenzal, who is, who is based here in Silicon Valley, but is currently in um, the East Coast. And Tim Wills is the Chief Impact Officer of Mentor, and Mentor is a 30-plus year um, mentoring organization that is um, recognized by the Department of Justice. So we're starting to have some conversations with them um, um, as to how we could collaborate with each other. So. Watch out for that. These are all very experienced people around mentoring. And then for socialization and some uh, fun and sometimes serious talks too, please join us for our second Saturday hike at the Dish at Stanford. Uh, we're starting early because of uh, summer. It gets hot faster. So 7 a.m., please, if you could um, join us. Um, be there and we will be there. So normally Hong and I are the ones that are there on the mentor side. So we are doing our fundraiser uh, from July 7 to August 8. So we, you still have time, 11 days uh, to support us. You can participate as, uh, uh, as you register to walk, run, or do a bike ride or you can also do, donate. Um, this year, we're encouraging everybody to create teams so that you can have more fun photos to share with us. And these are some of the photos from our kickoff walk on, Ju on July 7. So it, we recorded it or pre-recorded it, but we launched the, um, the recording on July 7. And some more views of... Um, Point Bonita in San Francisco, uh, Salsalito. And one of the great features that we have for uh, the fundraiser is also to engage people to submit their photos. So we have the individual prize and the group prize for team photos. So please go ahead and register and, uh, and share your photos. So definitely we are here to serve mentees. So um, if you know anyone who wants to, uh, who needs help and wants to become a mentee, please send them our way. Same way, um, we continue to recruit mentors. Uh, we cannot serve mentees without the generosity and dedication of mentors. So please send them our way as well. And for as far as um, yeah, I talked about the village earlier, so these are some of the volunteer roles that we need within the community so if you know of anybody who is looking to make a difference in the mentoring space please go ahead and share this with them and of course um, anybody who is um, supporting the uh, uh, a nonprofit, you are welcome to do the donations on our web page 
And lastly, we'd like to encourage you to uh, send us uh, your feedback through the survey, uh, and I will attach. I uh, will um, send the survey link through the chat, and you will also be receiving the link through Eventbrite. And with that, we are a wrap.